तो वैसे ही अपना जो है वही रहेगा ना हाँ हाँ अपने पैसे रहेगी अपने किया है ना हेलो लैंग्वेज इज नॉट अ जेनेटिक गिफ्ट इट इज अ सोशल गिफ्ट लर्निंग अ न्यू लैंग्वेज इज बिकमिंग अ मेंबर ऑफ द क्लब द कम्युनिटी ऑफ स्पीकर्स ऑफ दैट लैंग्वेज गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन प्रेजेंट हियर आई एम नंदिनी जैन and i am revti dubey a very good morning sir and ma'am and all over present here we must delighted to offer a heartly welcome to all the people gathered here to the inaugural function of the english programming course functioning in english coming together is a beginning keeping together is a process working together is a success so the most awaited occasion is finally here now every auspicious occasion commences with the lighting of the lamp now may i request all the dignitaries on the dais to join for lighting the lamp and i request shali ma'am to give them the company and i would like to invite the performing arts students sonal shruti vishal and priyash for saraswati vandana हेलो 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 जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तू नम दुर्गा जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तू नम दुर्गा तू भवानी महाकाली तू भवानी महाकाली तू शिवानी मंगला जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तू नम दुर्गा जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तू नम दुर्गा ससरी गमा पद बम गा शारदा सरस्वती ज्ञान देवी वंदना आ शारदा सरस्वती ज्ञान देवी वंदना शांति सुख की हो विमला शांति सुख की हो विमला ज्ञान दातु सफला जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तो नव दुर्गा जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तो नव दुर्गा लक्ष्मी धन की संपदा पूरी करत कामना आ लक्ष्मी धन की संपदा पूरी करत कामना ऋषि मुनि जन सकल प्रिया ऋषि मुनि जन सकल प्रिया कोमला तू चंचला जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तू नव दुर्गा जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तू नव दुर्गा मामा पद पमगा ससरे गमा पद पमगा शारदा सरस्वती लाश्मी संपदा आ शारदा सरस्वती लक्ष्मी तू है संपदा काली दुर्गा शक्ति काली दुर्गा शक्ति माँ कोटि है तुम्हें प्रणाम जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तू नव दुर्गा जगत जननी भव 
तरिणी मोहिनी तू नव दुर्गा तू भवानी महाकाली तू भवानी महाकाली तू शिवानी मंगला जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तू नव दुर्गा जगत जननी भव तारिणी मोहिनी तू नव दुर्गा मोहिनी तू नव दुर्गा मोहिनी तू नव दुर्गा थैंक यू श्रुति विशाल एंड प्रियांश फॉर दी वंडरफुल परफॉर्मेंस वी आर ऑनर्ड बाय योर प्रेजेंस ऑन दिस ओकेजन सर एर मैम द वर्ल्ड इज फुल ऑफ डायमंड्स एंड जेम्स एंड वी आर हैविंग सम ऑफ देम हियर टुडे टू बिल्ड दिस इवेंट विद दिस नोट आई वुड लाइक टू गिव माई हार्ट यू वेलकम टू आवर गेस्ट डॉक्टर भास्कर नायर सर एंड डॉक्टर दीपा वंजनी मैम प्लीज सर एंड मैम कम ऑन दी स्टेज फॉर द सैम्पलिंग I request Charini ma'am and Nayar sir to come on the stage for sampling. Now I request Jyoti Ma'am to give sampling to Deepa Ma'am. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Ma'am. So we are not strangers. Only the introduction is missing. Now I would like to invite Dr. Shalini Madhur Ma'am to please come on the stage and introduce the program. and very warm good morning to one and all present here uh, i welcome you professor nayar deepa ma'am and uh, my co uh, colleagues and all the students dear students for last few years i and dr nayar uh, are, have been planning to conduct a program to develop uh, competency of uh, student in english communication in fact in march 20 we have planned or finalized a program which is uh, train the trainer but due to covid we have to uh, cancel that program and since then we are planning to uh, do something in an online mode but uh, viewing the reluctancy of learners to uh, learn through that media and now uh, overall improvement in the situation uh, covid after the retreat almost retreat of covid we are here face to face so i once again welcome you all my dear student in this great learning se session functioning in english this is uh, 100 r 
uh, certificate course you will be getting a certificate after the after successfully completing this program out of these 100 hours 60 hours will be conducted in offline mode and remaining 40 hours will be in online mode right you will learn more about the modalities of this whole course uh, when uh, in the address of dr nair dr nair will elaborate upon that how what will be the ways or how the program will be conducted as you know that this program is being organized by department of humanities in association with LTIF. so let me just briefly tell you all about my department that is department of humanities and LTIF. so department of humanities is the centralized department of ips academy and faculty members from this department go to almost every college of ips academy to teach hindi english communication skills business communication uh, legal english legal hindi uh, basically the department was uh, established with this objective uh, to teach the concept of language both hindi and english in innovative ways uh, that help the student to develop their competency in four basic skills of communication listening speaking reading and writing normally we call it as lsrw skills and uh, uh, again to allow the student to present themselves uh, confidently correctly and clearly right this is the objective of this department and this present program is an is a step in this direction and uh, just few words about uh, LTIF. It is English Language Teachers Interaction Forum. It's a voluntary teacher forum working for the empowerment of teachers and learners of English language. It is established in 2002 as a small teacher fraternity. It grew as a pan Indian association over the years. LTIF has organized around 500 programs for students, teachers and parents in various parts of country. LTIF directly caters to the professional needs of language teachers and academic needs of learners. The members of LTIF are driven by their passion of education and motivation to make difference in the world the forum believes in democratic notion of education and promote dialogues on topics related to uh, language education in general and english language education in particular it has faith in the fathomless potential of the individual and supports them to achieve their best together we can make difference together we can support rural india to empower themselves with this objective ltif is working to empower rural india through english language education under the able guidance of professor nair and his team so I welcome you once again in this inaugural program. And before I go back to my seat, I just want to express my gratitude to Deepa ma'am for her ever ready unconditional support to all my ventures. I also express my gratitude to the management members and my heartfelt gratitude to all my team members for uh, turning this program into reality. And just my good wishes to my, all my students. Happy learning. OK, thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. I am glad to introduce a guest of honor for this workshop, Dr. Deepa Vanjani, ma'am. Dr. Deepa Manjani Ma'am has an academic career spanning 26 years and is presently heading the English department of PMBG Science College Indore. A PhD in English Literature, she is also a research superior having worked as a freelancer with the Times of India and Hindustan Times. She has also contributed article to Confluence, South Asia, Asian Perspectives published from UK. Her book, 
of poems Shifting Sands has published from Hong Kong. She has also edited books, been media representative uh, for the Jaipur Literature Festival, written a script for short films, translated content for NGOs, worked on curriculum development, published more than 20, uh, 20 research papers and presented papers in national and international seminars. In June this year, she presented a paper at University of Alicante in Spain and has been in, invited to work on international project called IOW, uh, the Dictionary of Problematized Otherness being headed by Professor Andra and uh, Paolo Gregoris. She, uh, she has been also published in the Pro, uh, Proverbs Poetry Prize Anthology thrice and has been awarded by Bridge Bhumi uh, Foundation in Indoor Press Club, Women Press Club of the State, uh, Anand Mohan Mathur Trust and Rotary International. She has also worked in various capacities such as resource person, keynote speaker and judge in various schools and colleges. Okay. Thank you, Nanni. And I, I now, I would like to invite our honorable and dignified Dr. Deepa Ma'am onto the stage to speak a few words. Please, Ma'am, come. Good morning, everyone. Respected Nair sir, Shalini ma'am, uh, all the faculty members of the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, dear students, and in fact, the entire fraternity of uh, IPS. I am grateful to you all for having me here and thankful to the students for their presence. Um, the letter of invitation has stated that the topic uh, for this certificate workshop, its workshop is proficiency in communication or proficiency in English. So, how would you define proficiency, anybody? Or what would be the meaning of the word proficiency? Anybody? Proficiency? Anybody who can give a a meaning to of gain competency in to something. gain competence very good proficiency is gaining competence if you look up the dictionary meaning of the word proficiency it will give you ability skill and competence as the uh, meanings and close synonyms of the word proficiency so is do you feel there's any difference between fluency in english and proficiency in english the two terms are different they can replace each other or do you think they cannot they are two different terms like fluency when you say i have fluency in english i'm fluent at speaking english you're fluent at english so what would you mean by that i mean if somebody is fluent are we hinting at the uh, verbal aspect the spoken aspect of the language only yes or no yeah? Yes. yes. So, may I have your name, please? Um, it's Ashwin Tiwari. Sorry? It's Ashwin Tiwari. Okay, let's clap for him. <laughs> Great. Fluency, you could define as, or you could restrict it to merely the spoken aspect of language. You're fluent at English. But, as Madam said, that the four skills are very important as far as communication is concerned. So a very large part of communication skills is also dealing with non-verbal communication which includes other aspects of communication starting from listening and going to the most complex and intricate skill that is writing. So when you are proficient in a language, usually what it amounts to is it's preparing for a higher level of academics. You're preparing for a higher level of academics. Intending to gain expertise or competence or skill in the use of the four skills of the language in such a manner that you can either compete at some certificate level English examination for studying abroad, traveling abroad, for picking up a profession or a job somewhere which develops in you the right kind of 
skills for that particular job as required or it could be for enrolling in a postdoctoral program a phd program in a very good and renowned university in india or abroad so proficiency is a is a vast term when it comes to communication it encompasses a bigger canvas than fluency it takes into consideration the various skills of the language and the the thing is that we are the non native speakers of english we are not the native speakers because english is not the first language of ours so in a diverse and pluralistic nation like india where we have lot of vernaculars the phonetics and pronunciations of vernacular languages plus hindi in the hindi belt like uh, madhya pradesh and malwa and english so we are dealing with a very a very complex situation in india so we are the non native speakers with a great deal of influence of our own mother tongue and with a great deal of influence of hindi in the hindi belt in the hindi speaking areas of india for years as long as i remember we have been talking about competence at english language and i'm very sorry to say that even today uh, barring a few states in india the level of competence as far as english is concerned is is not a very heartening scenario and why despite english being a part of the curriculum at the primary level if you are studying in a good public school or a convent school or you begin at the middle level depending on the kind of schooling that you've had and then you go on to you know a higher level of english whatever is the board whether it's international board or cbsc or the state board the state board where you are studying but english is at as a part of your curriculum so when somebody is teaching you english at your school level uh probably focusing focusing on the text which is prescribed to you in the syllabus the text will have drama and fiction and poetry some questions some writing skills by the time you come to 10th standard or 11th standard you start losing touch with your grammar because in most cbsc i'm not aware of uh, mp board but i have been associated with a lot of cbsc schools so in cbsc schools the scenario is that 10th onwards your focus is on writing skills but the grammar part is cut down so there is no workbook of grammar where students are constantly made to practice their modals or their prepositions or the determiners you know this this exercise is over so the focus is on the writing skill now when the student comes in the first year class for example i'm talking from my own experience so i have a student who for example i'm taking a class in emrc at the university now they are all media students aiming to take up a career in electronic media coming from as good schools as choitram and shishukunj and emerald heights and queens so they are the all top notch schools of indore now these students when they arrive in the first year class and they are expected to study literature they are studying english literature the part of the syllabus they have hamlet and ayn rand so they are studying shakespeare and ayn rand very diverse tennessee williams and samuel beckett so you can see the range that is prescribed so they are expected to write naturally it's literature you are expected to write a good deal imaginative creative so when you start ch checking the answer sheets you realize that somewhere down the line they have forgotten that every language has its grammar and the grammar is very important for framing sentences so you might have a wonderful imagination and lot of creativity but when you express yourself in writing the lacuna is there now the lacuna is with subject verb agreement mostly great deal of errors they forget probably that they are starting with a singular subject and what should be the agreement of the verb with the singular subject or the plural subject and if it's a if it's a complex sentence then the situation becomes all the more drastic 
because by in a complex sentence or in a compound sentence the length being longer probably where the sentence began and where it ended it's like forgotten so uh, and with the use of pronouns pronouns is a very dicey game and i think students take it very lightly but it's quite a complex thing in itself when you study pronouns so how do you use the objective pronoun or the subjective pronoun or the reflexive pronoun very very important things in grammar so these are some fundamentals basics of grammar that will always help you in framing correct sentences even if the vocabulary is very average so the thing is grammar is boring for most of the students because you feel that once you are in 10th who studies grammar or who takes a grammar class grammar you don't study when you are at a senior level then how do you cope up because without the grammar of the language you cannot cope up with the language so how do you go about gaining that proficiency that you are looking at vocabulary building can be a very good exercise a very interesting exercise number of uh, apps and you know technology you are very lucky to have that kind of technology and the aids available for that grammar is practice and grammar is like maths the more you practice the more it comes so grammar you have to practice how do you go about practicing grammar you cannot mug it up no, no matter how many rules you know but when it comes to application so the thing is what the application of the language it is not the theory that is important it is the application of the language that is important so whether you are writing whether you are speaking whatever skill you want to gain or master you have to apply that language and until and unless you know that practical application part the whole idea of competence or skill or proficiency is defeated so the more you practice practice makes a man perfect very cliche to say so but it is the truth that practice will make a man perfect i have a research paper in my pen drive i didn't have a ppt if you could put this up i'll take a couple of minutes more it's a very interesting research paper and deliberately i didn't come up with a ppt because i thought it's useless to show some slides so uh, this is a case study this is a case study it's a very well written research paper in a very uh, renowned journal now this is a case study by some professors who have been dealing with communication english and they are talking about the issues in gaining competence or proficiency in english language in iranian schools and universities if you go through the highlighted parts of that paper i have highlighted them the issues are the same what they are facing we are also facing the same situations and it is not just about the students it is about a lot of other things than the students also it is about the textbooks i think challenges in learning english it's a pdf it's a pdf challenges in teaching and learning english something of this kind so you will see that there are various factors which are responsible you you can please stop talking yeah you are expected here to attend a course i am very sorry you are college students and studying in a scenario like this so you consider yourself fortunate that you are sitting in this auditorium like this okay and it's not a compulsion you are most welcome to leave the auditorium nobody has forced you here right i am very sorry i have been teaching for 27 years so i can't take nonsense when as far as students are involved so if you want to smile and laugh and talk you can just walk out of the door the prerogative is yours not mine yeah this one it's not visible i think so when you'll see the uh, this thing the scenario the scenario is that the textbooks the overall environment that we have the uh, the way the curriculum is designed 
the kind of importance which is given to english language in an interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary institution like a science college for example or an engineering college for example you'll find loads of engineering colleges in and around indore and what is the importance which is given to english language or the language lab in the college in the midst of mechanical engineering electronic engineering and civil engineering branches or etc etc a lot of a lot of policies of designing the curriculum from the point of view of those who sit in the curriculum designing the lacuna is at a number of places not just about the students so the first thing is you are seeing that english has dominated as a foreign language you keep on harping on it that it is needed it's a lingua franca and you need it for higher jobs and for higher degrees we all know that now it's a challenging task any language is a challenging task any language not just english any language of the world is a challenging task i don't know how somehow students have got this into their heads that gaining a language or learning a language is a very simple task and then you can treat it in a very secondary manner which is not the case if you take up german or french or spanish for instance and spend money outside for a class and you realize the kind of level of that language then you'll understand how difficult it is to study and learn a language and the grammar of that language so you see the difficulties involved now problems on the part of the students they have come up with four different kinds of issues the first is problem on the part of the students coping with the demands of the error of information explosion and efficient use of the internet means learning english as a necessity everybody knows this english is a compulsory course being taught at junior and senior high school levels we all know this and still a very disappointing situation exists as far as the proficiency or competence in the language is concerned we can go ahead ma'am yes yeah please scroll yeah so you lot of people will tell you how to improve your english lot of tips will be given to you how to improve your english in most of the english classes little attention is paid to the conscious efforts learners make in mastering a foreign language it has been argued that learning how to learn this is very very important i think this is the thrust area this is the area which needs the maximum focus learning how to learn somebody has to guide you there self directed learning would be of utmost importance of language users so this i think should be the highlight and thrust area of language learning somehow the oxford this research was done in oxford in 2001 and they've come up with this very interesting outcome here of what is thought about picking up a language learning english as a subject consists of a list of words and a set of grammatical rules which are to be memorized which are to be memorized the situation gets very hopeless when it comes to memorization how can you memorize grammar you can memorize words if you are appearing for a gre or a gmat exam for example for taking admission in some foreign university or if you are appearing for test of english as a foreign language or if you are in a cambridge level certificate learning but but how can you mug up grammar i mean it's beyond my understanding somebody has to still tell me how you mug up grammar students in english classes do not have a common background knowledge because some come from rural areas and some come from urban areas so there is a diverse setting in a classroom and how do you handle this driver setting in the classroom and the demarcation between somebody coming from the rural and somebody coming from the urban background so this is a huge gap in an english class which needs to be addressed then we can scroll further ma'am and come to the next page 
there are problems on the part of the teachers also number of teachers who who are not trained teachers at school level for instance who have not taken an advanced certificate course in the english language for example are also teaching the students and the aim of the stu teacher is to prepare the student for the examination like i told you if you are in the cbsc and you are preparing for the examination so just passing the examination or getting a good grade because it comes on the name of the teacher also and on the name of the teacher school also so you want the good grades for your school but how prepared the act student actually is in reality the problem is there so we are taught to prepare for the examination and not prepare for learning the language so this is a problem on the part of the teachers this this whole situation i think in ex it exists all over the country it is not just about uh, one particular state or in iran we can go ma'am uh, ahead teachers do not attach equal importance to four language skills and speaking skill is the most neglected aspect of the four skills in foreign language instruction the great problem when it comes to communication skills spoken part of english the textbooks the next the third problem problem on the part of the textbooks so the most researchers for example you can see cheston and magrith strongly support the idea of teaching the culture of a foreign language you have to know the subtleties the nuances of the language because a number of idioms a number of proverbs a number of even the american slangs they are all related to the cultural aspect of that language it's raining cats and dogs if somebody tells you it's raining cats and dogs like it has been raining since last night now somebody has to tell us that you it is raining cats and dogs so why we are using cats and dogs for raining kutte aur billi nahi baras rahe pani baras raha hai so why are we using cats and dogs so agar kutte billi nahi baras raha aur pani baras raha hai to where is this coming from so the background the etymology of the words the history of the language and the culture of the language very important aspects uh, when when uh, this dear girl read out this my introduction she also spoke about paula gregoris yeah. she is a, a university professor in italy and she invited me to work on this online project that she and her team is doing she is coming up with iow in other words which is a dictionary of contextualized problematizing uh, words so what they are doing is they are go delving deep into the culture and the etymology of words which i found very interesting because they said that if the reader knows the history the background the cultural uh, setup and the etymology of the word it it makes more sense to understand that particular word so uh, they are doing a lot of very good work in that direction course books should constitute an effective resource research for resource for self directed learning and for presentation of material this is the kind of textbook and curriculum development that needs to be done so this is a very insightful paper not only for i think the students it is also for the teachers of the language i think all of us who teach english when we are imparting a course or a workshop or a classroom uh, dealing with a classroom i think we should need to keep in certain uh, in mind certain requirements of the students uh, rather than expecting only from the students you know students have their own set of problems and uh teachers might have their own set of problems so the idea is when you are having a classroom teaching we have to bridge that gap and bridging that gap probably will help us in understanding the the deficiencies of gaining competence in english the culture also means the environment the requirement of the language how much do you require a language outside of the classroom that is a very big motivation for anybody to pick up a language how much do you need a particular language outside of the examination you come here 
Yes, you with a lot of threat. Yeah, come. Please come. Come here. Yes. So I think this is the, yeah, come. This is the idea I was trying to put across to you all. Uh, thank you for listening and thank you for participating. What's your name? Mayang. Yes, Mayank. Uh, please do me the honor of encapsulating what I just said and bring a few points that you feel are important for language learning to the students. Yeah. The mic is yours. Any one or two points you think are important for learning English and that the students should keep them in mind. Which year are you in? Which year are you in? Third year of BCom. You're a BCom student. Why are you doing BCom? Why are you doing BCom? Why you chose commerce? Okay, now tell the students two points about why they should be learning English. I do to you what you do to me. It is very simple. The way you behave with me, I behave with you. It's a very simple situation. Okay. Aba jaiye. Come. Come up and tell how language should be learned. Give some insights to your friend also. What's your name? Shahid. Yes, Shahid and Maya. You would like to listen. Hum log sab all ears hain. Aur sunna chahiye. I didn't tell anything. I didn't tell anything. There. I didn't tell anything there. Yes? I didn't tell anything there. Really? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Jaye. देखिएगा आपको लाइफ में ये लाइफ लेसन है शुद्ध हिंदी में आपको मैं बता दूं शायद आपको इतनी बेरुखी से और कोई नहीं बोलेगा ये बात द लाइफ लेसन इज जहां बैठे हो जहां जिस समय बैठे हो जिस काम के लिए वो काम अगर ईमानदारी से करोगे अगर सिर्फ वो सुनने का भी काम है लाइफ ऐसी ही बनती है लाइफ ऐसे ही बनती है अगर टाइम वेस्ट करना है लाइफ में तो बहुत सारे फोरम्स और प्लेटफॉर्म्स हैं टाइम वेस्ट करने के आपके आपकी पूरी लाइफ वेस्ट हो जाएगी एंड हु केयर्स पर अगर लाइफ बनानी है तो जहाँ बैठे हो ना वो काम ईमानदारी से करो आधा घंटा सुनना है तो आधा घंटा ईमानदारी से सुनो आधा घंटा पढ़ना है तो आधा घंटा ईमानदारी से पढ़ो सिर्फ पढ़ो वो आधा घंटा जो पढ़ाई का है वो काम आएगा और जो आधा घंटा सुनने का है वो काम आएगा दिन का एक घंटा फॉर अ फ्रूटफुल एक्टिविटी be it competence in language, be it competence in the subject that you are studying. So if you don't want to be a mediocre or a cipher, just pay attention to this one simple fact of life. Jaha baite ho, wo kaam imandari se karu. I guess I've made my point. Or agar proficiency ki baat hai, to Hindi mein bhi agar proficiency ho jayegi na, to bhoat badi baat ho jayegi. English uske baad hai. तो हिंदी की कितनी प्रोफिशेंसी है पहले हम ये देख लें कि हम दो सेंटेंस करेक्ट हिंदी के बोल सकते हैं क्या और जब लिखते हैं तो क्या स्पेलिंग्स लिखते हैं दूध और फूल में बड़ा ऊ की मात्रा लगेगी हमको ये भी नहीं पता है सो लेट्स नॉट टॉक अबाउट जस्ट इंग्लिश लेट्स आल्सो टॉक अबाउट योर बॉडी लैंग्वेज एंड मैनरिज्म्स विच आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट तो सबसे पहले तो अपनी बॉडी लैंग्वेज और मैनर्स को सुधारना बहुत ज़रूरी है तो टिप्स हैं ये लाइफ के तो या
I don't want to check your listening skills. Check your memory skills. Listen. Then check whether you have heard it earlier. I'm going to repeat, reproduce a dialogue between a young man and a young woman. Of course, in love. Maybe a little older than me. Now also you can? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Sir, actually. Oh, then you should get a call of mic. I, I want to hold my hands to focus. Sir. Oh, please, 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 please. Now, my face is Thank you, ma'am, for your presence and well doing good time. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your presence. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. There is 15 minutes break. There is 15 minutes break.